All right, this is time to begin our worship. Let's find a seat. We'll begin our praise and worship for the God that saves us from our sins. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. At, at Taylor Street, those of you who are here in person or those of you who are 
online. We want to welcome you to worship this morning. And you know, the thing is, no matter what we think about what's happened over the last several days, we have to be thankful for, and the main thing is that God's still on His throne. And that, uh, you know, God loves us, uh, and Jesus died for our sins, and that through Him, uh, you know, we've got the greatest blessing that we could ever have. So, you know, let's don't lose focus on the fact that we are such a blessed people. And uh, let's all join together as we worship this morning. This old hymn, everyone ought to know, so let's really sing out. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, from heaven's praise His name. Praise the Lord, God in the highest, all His angels, praise the Lord, all His souls together. Please pray with me. Our Lord and Father in heaven, we thank you for another day of life. We pray for the problems our government is experiencing, that our nation might be unified and come together rather than fight. Our struggle is to find in the scriptures is against the rulers and powers, world forces of darkness, and spiritual forces of wickedness. We pray they return to you. We pray especially for those Christians around the world being persecuted, murdered, and sold into slavery. Give them the strength they need in life's perilous journey. May we be grateful you are Lord of all, and have no fear, for if we put you first in our lives, you will grant us everlasting life. We thank you for your grace and healing, given especially to our grandson, Ty Davis. He continues to be seriously ill. But you answered our prayers Please be with all the sick and those recovering. 
we miss them. As we turn our thoughts back to you, in your saving grace for each of us, may your Holy Spirit find a home in our hearts. We pray you accept our worship. May the results of this worship be reflected daily in our lives. In Christ's name, amen. figure out which wire goes where. Uh, well, I'm going to have to get undressed here, I think, to get everything done. Here we go. I'm officially online, too, there. So I want to welcome uh, all of you back. Uh, you know, you heard me last week and showed up again, so that's always really a good, a good sign. I appreciate that. And, um, and for all of uh, people who might be listening online, uh, we are in the process. Of course, I am, uh, I am not the normal preacher, but y'all have a pretty abnormal preacher as it is anyway, so <laughs> that doesn't matter. Uh, uh, somebody amen on that one. Don't they? Okay, I think I'm all wired up here. I think I'm going to be all right now. Um, 
I decided since we have four lessons, counting the sermons and the Bible class, that we were just going to do a little series here that I think is really important in our lives, and that is just the whole idea of trusting God. And I, I think in, in, in times that are going on, I mean, none of us have ever lived through a, a national pandemic or a worldwide pandemic before. And I, even just before I'm getting up, I started getting texts this morning from uh, more friends of mine who have now come down with it, and uh, very serious, some of them... Uh, uh, one of them's intubated, and so not doing well. Uh, others, uh, one of them, his wife has cancer, and uh, very concerned there. And so we're just having to deal with the issues in our lives. Uh, with our, are we going to be able to trust God or not? And so we want to just continue with this this thought, and we talked about it some this last week. You know, in the in the early days of the Weather Channel. Of course, some of us are old enough to get our weather back. You know, I remember even the weatherman getting on TV and having the flannel graphs. Now, that's how old I am. There's a couple of you here that may remember before TV or whatever, but he had his little flannel graph. He had the sunshine and the clouds, and he'd point to it with his little stick there. And then eventually things got better, and they started getting graphics. Well, eventually, years ago, on cable TV, you had the Weather Channel. And people just, that's where you went to to get your weather. And I especially liked weather on the eights because I need to find out what the weather, this is before, you know, you got your phone out and you just looked right quick. See, I was, I was leaving this morning. I got my phone to find out what the weather's going to be like here in Hobbs. Uh, this is before the, the phone started doing that. And so I'd, I'd watch weather on the eights. Well, after a while, you know, the weather channel needs to get some ratings up and things. So they started doing a, uh, a show and you've probably watched it it's called Storm Stories. Uh, most of you have seen some of the Storm Stories. Now, it really irritated me at first because anytime storm stories came on, they preempted weather on the eights, you know, on 18 and 28, and uh, they preempted, and I couldn't find out what the weather was going to be. But I really liked some of their uh, shows there, and I've got to admit, they had some pretty good ones there. But I believe if uh, 2,000 years ago, if we'd had our iPhones handy, we could have been on a boat. And we could have had a story of all stories about storm stories. And we want to talk about that today. So let's read our text here. Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. And again, I don't remember if I put NIV on the text for the wall or whether I have the ESV. But I'm going to read from the ESV. You can follow along either way. On that day when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across... Hang on a sec. I'm going to have to take this mask off. I just can't hardly preach with the own. All right. I will put it back on as soon as I'm finished here. I do take this serious, what we're having to deal with, but... Uh, uh, I'll put that on when we get finished. All right, back to our text here. On the day when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. And other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But... Jesus was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care that we're perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the winds and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and he said, and said to one another, who is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Now last week we started this little short series, and actually I got a lot of lessons with this, but I, I just wanted to spend a little time on uh, these couple of weeks that I'm here, is we started asking the question. And here's the question. How would things be different in my life if I spent, by the way, that's an old slide there, the next year... I thought I changed that, but I didn't, obviously. If I spent next year totally trusting God for everything. In fact, 
I don't recall if I did it in the morning uh, worship or in class, but I just kind of challenged you. I said, you know, Thanksgiving's coming up here in two or three weeks. What if, and I want to challenge you, that as your family gathers together, y'all ask that question. What if, what difference will it make in our lives if we spend from this Thanksgiving to the next Thanksgiving totally trusting God for everything in our family's life? And I promise you, if you will do that and make that a, all of you talk about it in your families, the next year when y'all gather, you'll have some stories to tell. And there'll be great stories of faith. It doesn't mean things will be great as far as uh, you may go through some big storms in your life as we see here. But it will make a tremendous difference in your life. So what does it mean? What does it really mean to trust God? I think it, it's interesting of what Jesus said to the disciples after calming the storm. Look what he said. Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? Now look, we all have storms that happen in our lives. If you've been fortunate enough to go throughout your life and not have a real big storm, don't worry, it's going to happen somewhere along the way. And how we react to those storms, this is the key, how we react to those storms is going to affect all of us and for the rest of our lives. You know, we always camped growing up with the kids. I had three daughters and, and we'd go camping and years ago we went up to, to Cloudcroft and we were tent camping at that time and, and we got up there and uh, that night a storm of all storms hit. It was one of those lightning storms that was just crashing all around us, hitting the trees and everything else. It was, it was scary. Well, and, and to the point that we finally got up and uh, went into town for a while till the storm passed over. But it was so loud and so scary. My two-year-old, she was two or, three year old, two or three years old at that time, she was just traumatized by it. To the point that for years afterwards, any time a thunderstorm came by, y'all might remember what a thunderstorm is. That's back when we used to have rain around here. But a thunderstorm would come by, and she was so afraid, we, she and I would go get inside. We had a closet in the middle of the house, and I'd go sit in that closet with her and hold her until the storm was over. And she probably was a teenager before she ever got to the point that that just didn't bother her anymore. And it was because of a storm that happened a long time ago, but it affected her life for a long time. Uh, how I deal with the storms in my life not only affects me, but it affects those whom we love. Keep that in mind as you face the storms of life. It's not just about you. It's about how your family sees how you react to those storms. So let's look at this text. I want to consider this event in the apostles' lives. First of all, first thing we see about this is they're doing exactly what Jesus told them to do. Uh, look at verse 35 again. Jesus said, notice what he says there, let's go across to the other side. Jesus is saying, let's get in the boat. Let's go to the other side there. I mean, this is what good Christians do. Jesus tells us to do something. We do what he says, obviously. Now, I don't know what the weather outlook was that day. I don't know if they looked out and said, well, it looks a little stormy, but okay, Jesus said get in here. Or whether it was clear uh, I just don't know. But I know one thing, they did what Jesus said. And they're going, okay, Jesus is with us. Everything's good. Well, guess what? The storm hits anyway. Look at verse 37. And it says, a great windstorm arose. Some of the versions say a furious squall arose. And the waves were, notice this, they're breaking into the boat. We're not talking about a cruise liner here. So the waves are breaking into the boat. And it says the boat is already filling up with water there. Now think about this. Put yourself in the disciples' shoes. 
Put yourself in that boat. And what are you thinking? Lord, I'm doing what you said. Why is this happening? Lord, I go to church regularly. God, I, I pray to you all the time. I've, I've taught my kids all about you. I'm, I'm honest. I try to be a good example at work. Why is this storm happening in my life right now? Have you ever felt that way? And I'll tell you, to make matters worse, it looks like Jesus just doesn't care. That's the way it looks. Because look, look at uh, verse 38. But Jesus was in the stern, asleep on the cushions. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we're perishing? Jesus, don't you care? We're about to die. What's wrong with you? You know, it's, it's tough enough. It's tough enough to, to try to live for God in this old world. It really gets tough when a storm hits that's just shaking our foundations as to who we are, maybe what we've always believed, or whatever's going on, or, or whatever it may be. It gets tougher, and it's even worse as the storm hits and we feel like Jesus doesn't care. And then listen to Jesus' famous words. Verse 25, Luke 25, uh, 8, 25 says... In his account, he said to them, Where is your faith? Now look, this brings us back to our original question. The challenge that I'm putting to this congregation. What difference would my life be if I totally trusted God for everything that happens in my life? Now look, don't write this off. Don't write this off as preacher talk. Yeah, we talk about this Sunday morning. Yeah, we're going to trust God, but I'm not sure, you know, reality is I'm not going to trust Him that much. And No, don't write this off. This is reality. Trusting God for everything in my life. Have you ever thought, have you ever thought about how in the world could Jesus be sleeping during the middle of this storm? I... I've wondered that. How, how, how could this great storm be going on and Jesus over asleep? I mean, it says what, the waves are crashing over. It says he's up in the stern. So I, I, I think one of the reasons is Jesus was exhausted. And the reason I think that is because you look at the Matthew's account, he gives us a little bit of insight as to what had been going on beforehand. Look what Matthew has to say over Matthew 8. It says, And when Jesus entered Peter's house... He saw his mother-in-law uh, lying there sick with a fever, and he touched her hand, and the fever left her. And she rose and began to serve him. That evening, now notice, we always remember that story about Peter and his mother-in-law, but look, that same evening, they brought him many who were oppressed by demons, and he cast out the spirits with the word, and he healed all, all of those who were sick. And you might be thinking, yeah, that's what God does. You know, He just heals people and everything. Look, the, I get the idea that every time Jesus healed someone, it took something out of Him. And the reason I think that is, you remember the story, I don't have this in my, in my notes there, but you remember the story of um, uh, the woman uh, who was bleeding. And remember, she touched the hem of his garment. And Jesus said, who touched me? And they said, oh, Jesus, there's all kinds of people around here. Everybody's been touching. He said, no, I felt the power go out of me. So Jesus has been healing people all evening, all day long, all evening, no telling how long, maybe into the night. And he gets in the boat. He says, guys, we got to go somewhere. Let's get away from this. We got to take a break. Let's get in the boat. He is exhausted. But I think there's more to this sleeping, Jesus being able to sleep during the storm than just being exhausted. And why I'm saying that is because I have an idea that even in this crowd this morning or people listening online, you have been extremely exhausted, but you can't sleep at night because of the storms that are going on in your life. I think you know what I'm talking about. So it's not just exhaustion. We see a storm happening there. So what's the difference? How could Jesus be asleep? 
It's because Jesus lived his life totally trusting God for everything. Hence, that storm was really no big deal to Jesus. And I know what you're thinking. Well, yeah, it's Jesus, of course. I mean, he was there at the creation of the world. Of course he could do that. Well, it was Jesus, but what lesson did Jesus want his disciples to learn from this? What lesson does Jesus want us to learn from this account? And I think it goes right back to his statement when they wake him up and he says, where is your faith? And it goes back to the question we're asking ourselves, what difference, what difference would it make if I totally trusted God for everything in my life from this Thanksgiving to the next. Now you can start now, but you know what I'm talking about. What difference would it make in my life if I did that? When I think of the disciples doing exactly what Jesus had told them to do, he told them, get in the boat. And then I see the storm hit. I think about what the psalmist said over in Psalms 4 verse 5 when he said, Offer right sacrifices, that's doing the right thing, and put your trust in the Lord. In other words, you do the right thing, but your trust is not in the fact that you do right things. Your trust is in God. I think one of the hardest tests that we face is when we're doing our best to do God's will and then hardship happens. It might be illness. It may be death. I don't know. You get to thinking, Lord, give me a break here. I'm doing the best I can, and why is this happening here? You know, it's, it's real easy to put my trust in how much I do for the Lord. And I want to argue to the Lord and say, well, God, I've done this, and I've done that, and now look what's happening here. After all, I'm working hard for you, and surely the Lord is going to bless my efforts. Well, guess what happens? The storm hits anyway. And Jesus says, where is your faith? You see, when we find ourselves in this situation, I think there's several temptations that hit us. I'm talking about this temptation, we're doing the best we can and yet storms hit. I think the first temptation that hits us is just simply to want to give up. I mean, it's kind of the idea of, what's the use? I mean, I worked hard for Jesus and it looks like everything's going to fall apart anyway. And, and just give up. What, what is the use? And I've known people, I'm, I'm sure you have too. They've gone through terrible storms of life and they just give up on God. It didn't make any difference all this. I, 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 knew, I knew a guy, missionary. Well, things didn't go well. And his whole idea was, well, here I was trying to do the Lord's will. And I was doing mission work and everything fell apart. And he's given up on God. I don't think he even believes in God anymore. Well, the problem was he's doing right things, wanting to do mission work, but his trust was not in God. One of our temptations is just to give up because it's hard. And I don't know what you're going through or what you will be going through, or what you've been through, it's hard. There's no two ways about it. We can't give up. I think the second thing that we are tempted to do is to try to fix it myself. Now, what do you think those... Now, again, I always say try to put yourself back into the uh, first century mindset. Put yourself in that boat. Uh, what do you think those apostles were doing during the storm? Well, what's it say the water's doing? Coming over the edge. What do you think they're doing? They're bailing water. That's right. They're bailing water. They're trying to get out of there. Somebody's steering the boat. Tell them, Peter, make sure you hit that wave. It's coming right at us. And they're, they're doing everything they can to fix it. Got a question for you. How much good did it do? 
Not a bit. Didn't do a bit of good. Now I've got to ask you a question. How much good does it do you when you're trying to fix everything that's falling apart? It doesn't, doesn't do us a lick of good. Another thing that we are tempted to do when things are just falling apart is to get mad at God. I sense this in the question that they asked Jesus. Notice what he says in verse 38. Teacher, don't you care that we're perishing? Jesus, come on, we're about to die here. Don't you even care? You get the idea, they're probably a little mad at Hey, what's the deal with Jesus? We're over here bathing water. We're trying to guide the boat, and he's up there asleep. They're mad at him. They're scared to death, and here he is sleeping on the job. He's supposed to be the one taking care of us. God, don't you care what's happening to me right now? My loved one is suffering with cancer. My spouse left me. Or my spouse died. My life's work is, is falling apart. It's in ruins. The kids, my child is hooked on drugs and is frying their brain. God, don't you care? And Jesus, what does he say? Where is your faith? You remember the Israelites back during Moses' time? Uh, they ran out of water. What'd they do? They complained. That's right. They complained. They ran out of food. What'd they do? They complained. And you get to reading it, they're mad at Moses and they're mad at God. Why did you bring us out of here? No, we're going to die in the desert and all of this. So God gave them manna. And then God says over in Exodus 16, look what he says. He says, this is that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. Hard times, storms are a test. Now, if you're like me, I've never liked tests. Didn't like them in school. Didn't like them in college. Didn't like them in grad school. Didn't like them. Don't like them in life either. But there's a purpose for them. So Jesus wakes up. And he sees this terrible storm that's going on. He sees his disciples panicking. And he says, where's your faith? It's a test. Now eventually, notice something. They eventually came to Jesus. Look, look what Luke had to say about this. And they went and woke him and said, Master, Master, we're perishing. Look, that's where we all eventually have to go. We have to go to Jesus. Now, ideally, we need to be going to Jesus first, but usually we end up trying to bail water and we start questioning God and all these other things instead of being with Jesus first. You know, when life has beaten you up so bad and when you realize you just can't go on any longer, that you're perishing, you cry out to Jesus, who is your only source of help. And Jesus calms the storm. Now, I think it's significance here uh, that I'm, I'm going to make a preacher point here because Luke and Mark say what they say here is that the storm, uh, Jesus calms the storm and afterwards he says, where is your faith? Matthew just kind of throws it all in there together. But preacher, since I'm preaching, I'm going to make the point out of this. I think it's a great point. So, all right. No. All right. So you've got, I, th I do think it's significant that that Jesus didn't rebuke them right in the middle of the storm. He didn't get up there and say, why don't you have more faith? You know, another, another wave hits. And, What's wrong with you guys? Another wave hits. That's, that's not what he's doing there. And, and some people see God that way. They're right, they, they, they see God in a way they're going through a horrible time in their life. 
and they see God and stand back there and say, what's the matter with you? Ain't you going to be enough faith? Crash, and another storm, another wave hits you. You need to have more faith. Crash, another wave hits you there. Uh, that's, not, that's not the way God is. He calms the sea. He rebukes the storm. And when they could clearly see, then he says, where is your faith? And I thought about this. What if right in the middle of the storm, what if the disciples had said, whoa, this is a tough storm. Good thing we got Jesus in the boat. Let's be bailing. And by the time you know the wave hits, and man, that was a big one there. And Matthew Hollers back there to Peter, man, I tell you what, things were a lot easier when I was just collecting taxes as he's bathing water. Good thing we got Jesus and another wave hits and John says over to Judas, hey Judas, better hang on to the money bag there. Good thing we got Jesus and they just keep a going. What if right now you said those same words? Oh Lord, this is hard. This is hard what I'm going through. But Jesus, I'm really glad you're in the boat with me. And I'm glad to know that you will take care of this. What difference would it make in your life if you trusted in God completely, even in the storms of your life? I don't know what next year will hold for you. It may be a time of great prosperity and joy, and there are many, most of our lives are that way, but it may be that things hit that just rattle you to the bone. Just like I got the text just before I got up here. A friend of mine, is, two weeks ago, his wife is diagnosed with cancer, and it's serious, and all of a sudden now he has COVID. It rattles you. And you have to sit back and go, Lord, this is hard. This is really hard. But I'm glad you're in the boat. And you will see us through. God wants to make that difference in your life. And he wants to start making that difference today. Now, it might be. It may be in this crowd here or maybe people who are listening right now. You've put off being baptized. And you keep thinking, yeah, that, that faith thing, I, I'm just not ready. You're not ready to trust God completely? How has trusting in yourself done for you lately? It might be right now that you're going through a terrible storm in your life. Internally, externally, I don't know. But you need Jesus. You need prayers of brothers and sisters to just pray with you. Ah, if we can help you do that, any way that we can help, why don't you let us know as we stand and we're going to sing this invitation song. And I do want to say one other thing. If you're, if you're online right now and there's something that's it's really bothering you, I, email the church. Call the church. Now, I'm, I'm not the regular preacher here, but I can guarantee you, you do that, somebody will contact you and we'll spend time with you and see what you need. If we can help you in any way, why don't you let us know as we stand and we sing this song. On bended knee I come With an humble heart I come Bowing down before your holy throne Lifting holy hands to you As I pledge my love anew I worship you in spirit I worship you in truth Make my life a holy praise unto you. 
On bended knee I come, with a broken heart I come, bowing down before your holy throne. As I look upon your face, show your mercy and your grace, Change my life, O oh Holy Spirit. Make me fresh and ever new. Make my life, O oh Holy, sacrifice to you. Be seated, please. Thank you, Michael, for uh, those words today, and they are very, very appropriate for uh, kind of the times that we live in. Uh, I think they're appropriate for all, uh, all time, but especially the times that we're uh, living in now. I've got several announcements and prayer requests that we want to uh, honor at this point in time. Uh, make sure that you get one of the handouts. It's got several people that are listed that uh, would like uh, prayers. I've been handed this prayer request from the Abneys and Kathy Davis praying for Bobby Ballard. He is in surgery right now for digestive problems. And most of you know uh, Bobby Ballard. He was an elder here for a long time and uh, a good, good uh, person uh, and certainly want to remember uh, Bobby in our prayers. Um, Jana Robertson had surgery on her foot and it went well and she's here today. So gl very glad to see you, Jana. Uh, Tracy Hamilton is tentatively scheduled for surgery on Friday, um, so we certainly want to remember her. Uh, G.W. Grimes uh, has improved, and he may need surgery for a heart valve. And uh, I think he's over in the hospital in Lubbock right now, so we certainly want to remember him. Uh, Tim and Barb Sharoma are requesting prayers. They're in quarantine right now. Their daughter, Denise, uh, has uh, COVID. So they have been uh, a high risk exposure and I think she had an asthma attack and had to be taken to the emergency room for some breathing uh, treatments as well, but she seems to have, have calmed down a little bit. Rusty and Judy Taylor are, are uh, at home and, and need uh, prayers as well. Uh, Vaughn Ditto has uh, prostate cancer, we wanna remember him. Uh, Winnie Dean has had a knee surgery. Her knee has been replaced. If you remember, she's had a real struggle with her knee over the last several uh, months and had to have it taken out and uh, infection uh, cleared up and it has been replaced and she's in the nursing home in Lovington. So I wanna remember her. Uh, Bernal Clary is basically going through, through kind of the same thing that, that uh, Winnie did. I think she's had it replaced but had some infection and then my understanding is she's had to have the knee taken out again is that correct jackie and right, right now she just has a okay she's got a spacer right now so uh, she's going through a pretty tough time and want to remember doug and his family again michael we uh, certainly appreciate you coming in in uh, and uh, taking the place of, of doug in the class and in the uh, doing the sermons uh, he had a high level COVID exposure, but everybody seems to be fine there and they didn't uh, catch the disease. So uh, we've got several that we want to remember. And as Michael said, uh, it seems like it's really kind of hitting close to home now. A lot of people that we know have it, uh, a lot of uh, uh, spread going on here. And we really do uh, encourage you to try and, and be as safe as you can uh, in uh, being around other people keeping your distance, washing your hands, wearing your mask, and doing those other things that keep you safe. So I uh, want to remember all these in our prayer, and then uh, we'll, uh, I guess we'll have a song, and then uh, we'll uh, go ahead and do communion. So if you would, uh, bow with me as we uh, have a, a prayer for, for these that we have um, have asked for us to remember them. Father, we uh, come before you this morning and just uh, this is a time that we feel just kind of overwhelmed with things that are happening in life and, and so often we want to control things in life and we just uh, hit those points that we understand that we really don't control much of anything and, 
Help us to really look to you and, and just be grateful that you are in our boat with us. Father, we just uh, thank you for uh, Jana's uh, surgery, that it went well. Uh, we pray that you be with Tracy as she is looking at surgery uh, this week. Uh, we thank you for being with GW and for his improvement. We pray that you be with him as he uh, is uh, needing surgery for his heart valve and that that would go well. We pray that you be with Rusty and Judy as they uh, just uh, go through uh, health matters and, and just pray that, the, that they would be, be well. Father, for Tim and Barb Sharoma, we just pray that their situation would go well and be with their daughter, Denise, and, and allow her to be healed. Father, for uh, Von Ditto and for his uh, health issues, we pray that you be with him. We thank you for Winnie Dean and for the improvement that she's made. And Father, just pray that you continue to be with her. Uh, Father, we thank you for uh, just uh, Burnell and for all that she means to us and for all that she means to uh, people here. And, and we know that she's going through a pretty big uh, health issue as well. And we pray that you be with her. And Father, we thank you for uh, Doug and for his ability to uh, just uh, get through his exposure and be, be okay. And, and Father, we just uh, ask that you be with, uh, be with him uh, and, and just continue to allow him to, to heal. And Father, we uh, thank you for Michael Joyner and for uh, all that he does to us and for us and that uh, he might um, just continue to be a, a servant of yours and that he would uh, just allow us to hear the words that we need to hear. And God, again, we just ask you to be with Bobby Ballard and allow him to, to go through his surgery well. And Father, just help us all that, that we would have a good attitude, that we would know that you are on the throne and that no matter what happens, that uh, you're with us and that you care for us and that you love us. And Father, we pray these things in Christ's name. I'll be reading from 
Romans chapter 5, starting in verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Church, this morning I'm, I'm humbled when I think of the magnitude of God's love for us and the gravity of his sacrifice. I think back to my own life, and I know it's just me, not you guys, of all the things that I've done. And in spite of who I am and, and my human nature, he still died for me and he still loves me. And he did the very same thing for you as well. Will you please pray with me? Lord, this morning we come before you with humble hearts, grateful for the sacrifice that you made on the cross. Lord, that while we were still sinners, you died for us. And as Paul says, I pray, Lord, that we may continue to stand and to live in that grace. It's in your name I pray. Amen. Will you please pray with me? Lord, and for the blood uh, that you sacrificed on the cross, Father, that as we remember you and your sacrifice, may we re remember your love, Father. It's in your name I pray. Amen. Um, and at this time, I'd like to remind you guys that the collection boxes are all in the back. Um, and I'll just offer a prayer. And Lord, we also want to thank you for everything that you do for us and the blessings that you uh, do give us. Um, and I pray, Lord, that with those blessings, may we be able to bless others and may we be able to, uh, to be a reflection of your kingdom. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you do for us and that you give us. It's in your son's name that I pray. Amen. All right, church, let's stand. We'll do this song before we're dismissed.
and the challenge of us to uh, be the wise or trust in Jesus. Amazing love, man. Let's sing this song. It's a happy song. We're saved by the precious grace of God through Jesus Christ. Don't we make us all happy. Amen. We need happy right now in our world. Amen. Amen. All right, here we go. Uh, I thought you, before I do this, where is Connor? Everybody look at Connor. I'm really embarrassing. He may beat me up afterwards, so y'all pray for me. He turns 18. What day? Yesterday. Yesterday. He's already a parent. All right? That means a lot of this parents means a lot of uh, This is one of the children since we moved here that Fred and I have got to watch grow up from the children of people that we consider children. So it means a lot to us to see them grow up into us. So I'm glad that uh, man told me about that. So y'all take time to go, go by and uh, uh, tell him happy birthday. And he's, he didn't come to this. You can go by and press him if you want. That'd be mercy. Okay, here we go. I keep falling in love with you. Oh, we 